Um, my friend Christy, I had to make sure that she got to um, get on my Facebook Live because I didn't even prepare any questions for her. I could just talk to her for hours. Um, and so we'll just start here. And um, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, Christy? And then I'll see if I've got some questions for you. Sounds good, Annie. So um, I live in Northeastern Wisconsin in Fond du Lac area, and I was born and raised on a dairy up in Kewanee County. So dairy definitely runs in my blood. And um, so I've been a dairy farmer. I have worked in industry for 15 years, and now I have my own business where I focus 100% of my time on the people strategy. And um, Annie, that's kind of what brought us together. So um, I know that's not what we're talking about necessarily today. We're actually going to talk about an organization and something that I am super passionate about, and that's Dairy Girl Network. Um, you should be pretty passionate about that. What is Dairy Girl Network and why should a person like me care? <laughs> well, well, Annie, not only just you, but everybody across our industry. Um, so let me just give you a little backstory to that. Um, World Dairy Expo um, that many of us in the dairy industry participate in um, in the fall of the year brings many people together, whether you're on the dairy farm or you're in the industry. And that's a, a time for many of us where we actually just get to connect sometimes once a year with some of our closest friends. And in 2013, Laura Daniels had the idea to simply do a quick little reach out to a handful of people and say, hey, can, would you want to get together and get, um, go to dinner and um, share kind of some conversation in that evening? And I have to be very honest with you, I could not participate that very first time. But what was really pretty neat was um, from those 13 individuals, if I remember correctly, that were there, there was some little spark that just said, we got to do this again. And we got to figure out how we can make this um, even broader and bigger. And so um, that was the inception of Dairy Girl Network. And now today, um, we actually have, we have roughly um, almost 2,400 members um, that we, that are actual members. And we In have- In how many years? Um, since 2013. So the, oh. the, bigger, the bigger piece to that, Annie, is that um, on our exchange page, which is where most of the interaction takes place because that's how we connect because we are a virtual organization. So I love that you're doing Facebook Live because Dairy Girl Network is a 100% virtual organization. And so virtually from a social impact standpoint, we have over 5,000 women that connect on our exchange page. So um, that part's pretty cool to be able to share with, with you. Okay. So you decided, um, like, did you know you were kind of starting this movement almost, or did you just kind of think like, oh, I need some social interaction, and like, did you, did you kind of already start with the end in mind, or did it just kind of you know, explode, you know, like, yeah, talk a little so, bit about how it evolved? Yeah, so, you know, when you put a lot of great people together to come up and brainstorm ideas, that's really kind of how programming begins. And um, oftentimes you find that you have to prioritize which ones can we handle? How much time do we have? And, um, you know, we have today, we have a board of, of 12 members and three advisors. Um, we have bylaws and we have four staff members. So we certainly didn't start with that seven years ago. Um, but, you know, you bring all those ideas together and we knew to start out that it was all about just spreading the good word and um, sharing experiences. So how could we do that? And that was through different events to get women connected in person as well as virtually um, through Facebook and on our exchange page. And so that was priority number one. And, you know, the second priority for us was to simply develop kind of, oh, I'm going to call it educational opportunities whether that was through a peer group, whether it's through webinars, whether it was through our growing together field days. I had a wild and crazy idea that, thank goodness, some um, others came alongside of me and that was to host a national conference. And so, I love wild and crazy ideas. Oh, so yeah, so any, probably part of why we're good friends, right? So, um, you know, when we look back over the last seven years, there's, um, there's been a lot of great work done by many people to keep this organization growing and at a, at a very rapid pace, so. Okay. 
So you've talked about kind of the programming that you've established. Is there anything like that's brand new or anything that's um, up and coming that you have not told anyone else, but you're ready to reveal it on um, the Dairy <laughs> Discovery World? <Wilson? laughs> so, Annie, I don't know if I have permission to share all this. Yeah, I serve on the board and I've been on the oh. board from the beginning. Yeah, but I have to ask. I yeah, mean, well, of course, right? Why wouldn't we release something? So actually, you know, Annie, there's a lot of cool things. Um, we just wrapped up um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so we had a series of um, activities that we did as an organization from webinars to Stronger Together is our hashtag. Um, a lot of our organization is about um, support and being able to support one another, provide resources. Um, you know, so we just wrapped up a huge um, initiative around May Mental Health. And so a huge shout out to all of the people that were involved in that and everyone who pulled that together. And so um, where we're shifting gears and where we're really focused right now is it is national conference year. So um, November 3rd, 4th and 5th, we are planning to be in Lake Geneva at the Grand Geneva for our third national conference. And so um, as a board, uh, I serve as chair for the national conference. And one of the things that you have to do in the midst of COVID and um, like you're very good at doing Annie is you have to pivot. And so um, we made the decision as a board to continue to put one step forward and one in front of the other and plan this conference. And so we are moving ahead. And so we're gonna have over 25 speakers. Um, and so it is super exciting to see all that coming together and registration is open and people are registering. So that is um, that is our big focus for yeah. 2020. Uh, that's your big focus. Um, just hearing about you talk about that mental, uh, mental health uh, support. I was kind of following along a little bit. I mean, I've been distracted by a billion things, but you know, you kind of talk about, oh, we're wrapping that up. And I just think um, this in this um, like environment that we're in is so dark and so heavy. I mean, it just seems like every aspect of your life, you know, sometimes when, you know, your business is, um, is you're struggling there, you know, you could still be good at home or, you know, but it just seems like our entire world got turned upside down and no one has been immune to this thing. And um, just kind of, did you guys plan that? And were you prepared for that? Or did that just stem out of the events? Like you talked about pivoting, which is funny. And you would be really proud of me because that's the word I've been using quite a bit today. So because of you. So tell a little bit about, um, you know, when you kind of decided to do that. And is that just kind of, you kind of had to change what you were doing based off of what our circumstances are. Yeah, you know, Annie, I don't think that we changed anything necessarily because of the circumstances. I think, um, you know, specifically when it came to the maybe mental health awareness, um, we have some very passionate people behind the scenes um, that really drive that whole initiative and in, in the focus area of kids, yourself, um, recognizing when someone has a need, um, you know, and providing those resources to, to the, our broader organization, okay, in our membership. But when COVID hit, it just meant that it really kind of amplified everything, yeah. okay? And so, so very quickly, very quickly, we needed to, you know, look at what are the resources, developed an entire resource page. Um, we're still adding to the COVID-19 resource page on our website um, because, it, we're not, we're, just, we're in the midst of it all. You know, I heard you on the last segment just say, hey, wouldn't it be kind of neat to be able to go out to eat at the restaurant? Well, here in Wisconsin, guess what? We can. And so um, does it look different than it did before March 17th? Absolutely. Okay. But, you know, it is about continuing to uh, be that stabilizing force for others. And that's a big piece of what our organization uh, thrives for. So, yeah. Um. I, you know, getting ready for this event, I kind of leaned on you guys and I felt a little bit like, this is, um, you know, kind of uh, daunting or just very humbling because going and seeing like all the people um, in your network who are just 
kind of a powerhouse there. Um, a lot of people who I admire. And so I just think, um, I just hope your, your outreach continues to grow and um, just kind of what, what you guys are doing, just um, supporting each other. And I think that is why I love our industry so much. Um, I think you kind of worked in um, maybe other, you know, maybe other aspects of agriculture, but can you talk about this um, Dairy Girl Network? Um, so this is all focused on dairy. It is Annie. Yep. And is so, there anything like very special about dairy? And especially we're talking World Milk Day, something like we need to talk about Dairy Girl Network on World Milk Day, right? So mm -hmm. tell me what's <laughs> ironic, right? Yeah, pretty ironic. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be, I mean, Dairy Girl Network will be highlighting um, the great work of many dairy farmers, um, you know, for June Dairy Month in general. And so um, we actually gave a shout out for World Milk Day earlier today as well. And so, um, you know, are we limited to dairy? Um, no, you know, it's open to anyone in agriculture. Okay. Uh, from the standpoint, it just, we're much heavily focused on dairy, particularly because that's how we got our start. And um, hey, Jen. And so, um, you know, from that respect, that's just where our focus is today. I think the big thing is, Annie, is, is that part you touched upon, though, is knowing that you have that support network and the safe environment um, and the ability for us to reach every person, whether they may never get to leave the farm. And so our ability to be able to touch each individual is very important to our organization. Not everybody gets to travel the World Dairy Expo yeah. every year. Not everybody um, gets to do that. Yeah. So one thing that I noticed in your leadership and what you guys really um, promote and why I think, um, and this is just my personal opinion, but I think you guys really um, encourage uh, vulnerability and total transparency, like very raw <laughs> um, and brutally honest stuff. And so that's why I really admire your network. Can you talk a little bit, is that very strategic or does that just kind of your culture? Like, do you mean for that to happen or did it just kind of organically occur? Um, Annie, I'll only just speak for myself, okay? Um, but the reality is, is we're all human and um, there's good days, there's tough days, there's days where um, you need someone to pick you up. And then there's days where you get to be the cheerleader for others. And so that is a bit of just our culture. Um, but I think a lot of that is just the nature of the people in our organization. And we all take our turns um, when we need a little extra hand or when we can be that cheerleader or when we can give a little nudge and say, hey, we, we had to dig in and we got to work um, a little bit harder and a little bit smarter. And so, um, there's been a lot of a lot of pivoting. I like that you're using the word pivot, right? There's been a lot of pivoting <laughs> by everyone, by everyone in our industry and and across our industry and throughout the whole world, right? Over the last two months. Well, Christy, the one thing that I just love about you is you um, you walk to talk. So uh, she's been sending me little texts and, and all along the way as we've been um, well. I didn't even tell you about this until like Saturday. So you couldn't encourage me till then, but I can always just count on you to just be like cheerleader and supportive. And um, so I, yeah, I, I really admire that. So thank you so much for spending World Dairy or World Milk Day. This is not kicked in yet. <laughs> so it's gonna go strong. Okay, right. um, but yeah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off. I want you to enjoy your evening, spend some time with your little and your, your big girls. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your World Milk Day. Um, yeah, we should have been doing a milk toast, but. Yeah, we could have. have Why didn't we, Annie? We should have. Absolutely. I'll have a milk toast no, to you. Sorry. And um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> it says, it's right here. <laughs>